Manchester to London, from London to New York, from New York back to London, and then from London to Los Angeles. And I would say it's really having the belief that my dreams are real and that they are meant to come true. I found throughout my life that there are probably two stories that I remind myself that fill myself, fill me up with confidence to go on when I'm in times of doubt. So I'm going to tell you those two stories and hopefully I will ready people up to. The first one is, if you all think for a minute, you all sat here in this wonderful room and on the chairs with the table, but we're also here on Earth. And Earth is this round ball and we're all on it and it's in space. And it's not attached to anything, it's got no hooks and ropes holding it up, but it just balances for some reason, perfectly. And it spins, and it's got no motor in it, it just spins. We don't know how it does it, but it does it perfectly. For the same reason, we are sat here, but we can stand up, or we can jump up, and we can sit down, and gravity allows us to do that. There's just enough gravity, so we can jump up to catch a ball, but we can also lie down and sleep, and get up and go down without going too far or being unable to get up. In ourselves and in our bodies. I don't have five arms, I only have two. My eyelashes only grow to exactly the right amount. They don't carry on growing, and that's the reason the teeth switch on off. They don't carry on growing. My nose came to exactly the right length and it didn't carry on growing. So I use these examples to say that there is something in us, a seed in us, when we were a child, when we were a baby. And inside of that was information that made us able, when we grew to adults, for everything to grow just to the right amount to be useful for its purpose. So our arms didn't grow too long, our eyelashes didn't grow too long, and we didn't get five legs. So for that reason, I remind myself that whatever was in me when I was a seed, which may have been a dream to be an actress, to be a speaker, to be a mother, to be president of the United States, if that was put in me the same way that the information for my arms and my eyelashes and my legs was put in me, then it's right and it was in there for a purpose and if I stay with it, it will develop just as it should. That's number one. Number two is a thing I call gestation periods. We all know what gestation period is. So gestation period is how long it takes for a, a seed to blossom, to develop into something. So, for example, it takes a human being nine months from being a baby, a fetus, to turning into a fully developed child. I have some others. A dog, it takes 63 days. An elephant, 680 days. A whale, 11 to 12 months. And a possum, just 13 days. Everything whether it's a plant or a flower or a person or a whale, has a gestation period from when it starts to when it fully develops and it blossoms into fruition. Now, what I believe is that it's the same with your dreams. There is a gestation period from when it's seeded and you have it originally to when it blossoms and it goes into fruition. But the thing about gestation periods is they're all different and it depends on the complexity of what it is that's being developed. So a whale is 12 months, and a possum is 12 or 13 days. And also, it's very complex and we don't really understand it. So, for example, if I really, really wanted to have a baby, but I didn't understand the process in having a baby fully, I desperately, desperately want to have a baby, and then the first thing that happens is my periods stop. Hmm. Well, I know that my periods are linked to me having a baby, so now I've got no chance of being able to have a baby. Then I start throwing up every morning. Well, now I'm really ill and I'm probably dying. I'm never going to be able to have a baby. Then I start putting on all this weight. Well, now guys might not find me so attractive, and I sort of need them to be able to have the baby. And then I feel ill, and the list could go on and on. In fact, all of the things that are on the journey from the seed to the fruition actually look like the very things that are the opposite to me actually ever having the baby. And if I really only believed them, and I didn't know as in pregnancy that they're normal, I could actually ruin the fetus that I had and ruin the seed if, I actually, if it actually was in development. So therefore, gestation periods remind me to stay on track, and that I don't know how long the seed is going to take to get to fruition, and I don't know what it's going to look like to get to fruition. And it may well seem that everything that's happening is taking me in the opposite direction. 
But what I do know is that I believe in the universal law that there is a gestation period and if I hold on tight, then it will eventually come into fruition. That is my second one. You can clap if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now since I have a little bit more time, I'm just going to explain how I use those to give myself beliefs and how I believe that beliefs have power in your life. From those, I, I take from that the belief that anything is possible, my dreams are meant to come true, and even if they don't see me at the moment, then I just can't see it now, but it is going to happen. Now, the reason that beliefs are important are, if, for example, I really wanted a drink of this, there are a million ways that I could ask for a drink of this. I could say, could I have a sip? Can we share this? Do you know where I could get a drink from? I could just go, oh, I'm so thirsty. I could say, does anyone have anything, you know, to, I just, I just need something. Or I could just take it, or I could take it and hold it and then go, you don't mind, do you? There's an infinite number of ways I could ask for that drink. The infinite number of ways involves different words, different grammar, different intonation, different pitch, dif different volume, different body language. There's so many choices, and when I want that drink, I say it so quickly that it's not possible for me to say it consciously and make a choice of every word, grammar, intonation, body language choice. So that choice comes from my subconscious. And my subconscious is where my beliefs lie. So if my belief is nobody gives me what I want, I'm going to say, I don't suppose I can have any of that, or I might even go, I'm really thirsty, do you know where I could get a drink? And you'll say, yeah, go to the bar. Or I could say, ooh, I bet that's nice, and you'll say yes. Now, if my belief is everybody gives me what I want, I probably would approach this going, you don't mind if I have a bit, do you love? And then you would give it me because I've already taken myself 90% there that it's almost difficult for you to say no now. And so I get what I want and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that what I believe, that I always get what I want, changes my words, my thoughts and my actions and I always get what I want. So that's the reason why beliefs are so powerful. That's the reason why I have those two stories and I remind myself of them constantly. And that's why I'm here today in Los Angeles to achieve my dreams. Thank you.